Have you ever read in a magazine or watched a television program that had to do with the top albums, games, or movies list and thought, well, I don't know all the items on this list. I wonder if they're worth the shit. Well, that's what we're here for. We're taking the gargantuan list that is Rolling Stone Magazine's top 500 albums list created in 2003 and updated in 2012 and looking at every single album individually. Today on Tackling Top 500, we have 496. Boss Gags. By none other than... Boss Gags. I mean, I've never heard of this album before. I didn't even hear... I've never even heard of this yeah. guy, yeah. honestly. Sorry, sorry. I stumble across my words. Yeah, I've never even heard of Boss Gags. So, this should be pretty interesting. Without further ado, let's get into it. Boss Gags is a second studio album released by rock musician Boss Gags. Boss Gags' second album was recorded after his stint with the Steve Miller Band at Muscle Shoals Sound Recorders in Sheffield, Alabama, and released in August of 1969. It was released to Atlantic Studios and was produced by Marlon Green, Jan Wenner of Rolling Stone, and Boz Gags himself. Boz Gags is a rock and blue-eyed soul album with country infusions as well. The album was welcomed with positive reviews but sold slowly. The album was originally mixed by engineer Terry Manning of Stax Records. The album remained in their catalog until its lead in 1974 or 1975. It remained this way until it was remixed and released by Tom Perry and Atlantic Records respectively in 1977. Boz Skaggs includes numerous guest musicians including Al Lester, David Hood, Eddie Hinton, Roger Hawkins, Dwayne Allman, Barry Beckett, and Jimmy Johnson. The album contains 9 tracks and 44 minutes and 13 seconds of music. None of the album's tracks have been released as singles. Boss Gags is a great fusion of rock, soul, and country. Due to the year of its creation, it was unfortunately swallowed up by more major release albums and ultimately forgotten. But the album is a rewarding find for any fans of its respective genres. So how do you feel about this album? Well, I mean, considering I've never heard of this before, I it was pretty good. Yeah, me too. Like, it's just like this soul kind of thing, and it really, it's really good. Yeah, there's a lot of country on there, too. Yeah, there's, there's quite a bit. Like, you don't notice it as first, but as you get, like, like after a few tracks, and, like, you start to notice it quite a bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then you're like, well, I mean, honestly, when, while I was listening to this album, I was hanging out with another one of my friends, mm -hmm. and he could hear it from my headphones, and he yeah. was like, and man, what are you listening to? That's country as shit. <laughs> I'm yeah. Like, oh shit. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Um, but I mean, as someone who's not a big fan of country, especially like modern country. Yeah. Um, I will say that I, I did think this album was very good. And don't get me wrong; it's not just country, but that was what surprised me most. Yeah. Was the addition of all these country influences on here? Like you can really hear it, like say on. Like, I can't remember what the third track's called. I'm, I'm sorry. But, yeah. Like, just, once you hit that track, you're just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just right off the bat. It's just like, I can hear it. Because, like, the first two tracks are really, like, blue soul kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and, Very much so. Yeah. Then you get to the third one, and it's just like a change in sound. But it, it it's not too jarring you know it's just you can hear it and it actually it works pretty well alongside with the rest of the songs so yeah and and honestly this so this album really surprised me because usually i'm not a big fan of really long songs like 10 minutes long but the song on here called loan me a dime which i think is like 12 minutes long i actually thought that song was very good yeah and like usually i'm just like uh but like <laughs> i really like that one so I mean, in the future, if for some reason one of the people around here is like, dude, uh, well, what kind of music would you recommend for me? And I'm like, well, what do you like? And they're like, country. I will happily point them in the direction of this album, even though it's not purely country. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like, the good thing about doing this list is that there's a lot of stuff on here that I've never even heard of, mm -hmm. like this. And, you know, it's just like... Just show me music that I've never even heard of that's really good and that I really enjoy just by, just by going through this list. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, like, we even said at the beginning of this video, we... I never heard of this guy before because, I mean, despite his, like, two-year stint with the Steve Miller Band, it was nothing from what they're famous for. Yeah. So, it, it, it... This is, like, a hidden gem that we wouldn't really have even looked for. 
Yeah, is, isn't like it's hard to get your hands on these albums anyway? Kind of, yeah. Well, this one, not so much. But it, the first album was, it. it's virtually non-existent. Yeah. He's, Boz Skaggs' first album, Skaggs, what, or Boz, no, Boz, I'm sorry. It it remained, it, it didn't sell very well, and it didn't remain in the mixer's catalog for very long, and it was deleted, and it has never been remastered. So yeah. get, getting your hands on that is like a collector's item. I'm not sure how much it's worth, but I'm sure... It's probably it's, worth a little bit more than it should be. Exactly. <laughs> so... I'm just saying. But yeah. if you ever get the chance, definitely check this album out. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, definitely check this album out. It's really good. It's, like, if you've never even heard of Boss Gags, like, I'm pretty sure most of you haven't. But, you know, mm -hmm. it's really good. Yeah, definitely, definitely give this one a listen. Yeah. I think that about wraps it up. Yeah. Give a listen. All right. See you later. <laughs>